on the other line, and we're going to be uh, cutting to him here shortly, and we might have a special guest coming in from the UK. And before we go on, there's my stunner right there, my spring drive stunner, telling you that we're about almost two minutes early on the start time. Give some time for folks to come in. Give some time for me to find the broadcast here, and I just did on my iPad, so that I'm going to be able to keep an eye on things. And we've got 10 folks have dropped in already. And uh, let me know if you're if the wrench gang's in the house. Yep, Durr's in the house. We've already got one member of the wrench gang in the house. And um, we are going to let me let me go to the um, I'm going to go to the photos right at five o'clock straight up five we're going to go to the photos first that steve has to share and he's going to give a little bit of, of uh, background on each photo and then we've got some really special time pieces to show you folks so it does behoove you to come in on time on these shows sometimes because sometimes the hits start right away so that's how this happens so it is now 4:59 and 17 seconds here on the east coast united states time and we're going to go uh, with the photos right at 5 o'clock straight up. 5 o'clock straight up. We've got 16 folks already in the house watching. we got our wags in the house. Durr's in the house. So we got some early comers already in the house. And there's uh, that stunner showing you the time. It's coming right up on 5 o'clock straight up time. And that is within a second. A blue shirt Buddha is in the house. He's heading home. And we'll be listening in the car. There you go. He'll be listening to the to the happenings in the car. So um, let me go and pull up these photos here real quick because it is five o'clock now here on the East Coast. And Steve, the first photo that I'm showing is the Rolex booth. Yeah, I thought. Uh, am I coming through okay? The yes, sound? got you okay. fine. Uh, I thought I'd just show some more of the scene at the uh, Basel World and. Uh, I've neglected to show some of the big boys uh, booths. So the first one here is uh, uh, Rolex, and uh, I have a few shots of Rolex watches that uh, were on display, but I'm not going to show any of those today. And, and so that just, is a stunning photo. It looks like they had are those actual real trees in there. Yeah, yep. Yeah, this is the real deal. That were flowering. Yep, yeah, there are flowers <laughs> all over the place in this thing. And and, and Dave Williams is in the house. He says, everybody have safe travels. Okay, so um, let me go to the next picture here. Let's see if I can get this to load in. Next picture is Patek Philippe. Yeah, that's their booth they always have, and that's taken from above looking down. Mm -hmm. um, it's very uh, imposing, self-enclosed. You get to look at the little windows. You see the folks at the bottom, but uh, it's... Uh, uh, like a cathedral of or orology, let's put it that way. Yeah, and those where they're looking there, those are behind glass. Those are the watches they can actually look at, it is. right? Yeah, that's where if you were a straight visitor, not uh, a dealer uh, buying, you would stay out there and look at uh, all of the novelties. The, the, the riffraff stays out there, and then the VI correct. VIPs, such as yourself, you go in the back. Uh, I well, I don't go in because I'm not a dealer, so uh, uh, unless you're a dealer, you don't go in. Gotcha. Okay, now we got the next one. Don't crack under pressure. Tag who are? Yeah. Okay, so that's another. Uh, these these things are amazing. They actually build that for the show. And they're up for five or six days, mm -hmm. and they're disassembled and carted to Germany and stored in some warehouses at a great cost. It's mm -hmm. uh, quite amazing. Jeez, yeah. All right, now we've got uh, Graf. So there are also some uh, imposing jewelry uh, displays. Graf is very high-end jewelry and extremely high-end watches, uh, totally gem-encrusted uh, uh, over the top. I, I can see they've got quite a display there, too. All yeah, right. usually you have a gorgeous model or two at the door. Um, there you go. Th that would be something for Craig to take I care would of. Have, I would have taken her portrait. Absolutely, uh, I would have done would. that. So Work. this is um, Fopi, F-O-P-E. Fope. Fope. It's, Fope. it's an Italian line we carry and uh, very neat uh, pavilion that they have uh, that's opposite the graph. So they sort of moved up in the world. They were sort of in the back of the 
uh, booth for a while, and now they're uh, up front and uh, really nice line. That's the gold bracelet I wear comes from that line. Okay. And Matt is in the house. He says the renewable energy sector is is checking in from Kansas. He's in okay, Kansas. Okay, Matt. All right. And um, now we're looking at a Bugatti, it looks like. It's a Bugatti, and I've forgotten the model, or Chris knows all about it. Um, it's so stealthy that it was actually hard to get the camera to focus on that thing. <laughs> so it, it looks so like ho- it's, Hopefully the radar doesn't focus on it either. It, That's the deal, it, right? Yeah, it looks like carbon fiber or yeah. something like yeah. that. It's just really over the top. So there are a lot of vehicles. How many, how many of those do you all have on order? Uh, I have a few. There that, you go. Um, Going to be a oh, few now years we out. now we got a picture of the high beat Grand Seiko Stunner. That's right. That's the uh, SBGH two fifty seven, a limited edition of five hundred pieces, rated at six hundred meters in titanium. It is. That is stunning. If you want something that's a, a a little bit of a step up from the diver that I have, let's let's switch to mine and show mine real quick. There's mine. If you want well, a I, little step up, there you go. Is, Probably the last one. That's around. it. Yeah, that's, I've sold sold several. This is spoken for, um, and, and that's uh, a subscriber that that purchased that, correct? It is, and uh, maybe he'll be joining us uh, shortly. Oh, that'll be cool! Super, super yeah. cool. Okay, let me look at the next picture. Is the clasp, and that's very similar to the clasp of mine, which I really have gotten to love. Mm-hmm. I've gotten to where I I love the way that extends so easily and. It ratchets back in so easily, right on the wrist. It's just, and it comes on and off so easily. I mean, a lot of it is function with these watches, and this this one really nails it. It really works. So, people say you know, they they don't like the looks of the clasp. I've gotten used to it. I don't mind it one bit, but I really love the function. And he's going to love the function of that puppy. And mm-hmm. there, there's a picture of it open, showing the that uh, mechanism that you can actually extend. And it's real easy to use. Um, so okay, so now we're going to go back to Steve, full screen. Okay, Steve, we got uh, we got the watch, and of course you don't have the time set to the minute. Uh, but I don't. You've just got it running, though. You've got That's... that second hand running, and uh-huh. it's a little bit. You can see the little bit of clicking because it is a high beat. It's not a spring drive, and so you can see that. Um, Move it a little bit further from the camera. Maybe it's a little bit out of focus. All right, right there. Uh, right there. And uh, ten, 10 beats a second. So I'm not sure the, uh, the human eye can perceive. Yeah, we can see very fine clicks. It's not, and, and there's also a little bit of latency in the video. So, you know, when you see it in person, I think it's probably oh, right. being a little bit smoother. But you can see a very fine click to it. Definitely smoother than watching a Rolex uh, secondhand go around. Definitely smoother than that. Because the Rolex is 2880, right? 28800. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, right. it is. Yeah. So, so this is faster. So um, that is just absolutely stunning, folks. I mean, that is just, with that blue dial, that is just over the top, absolutely stunning. And so... Um, it's Warren, correct? That's getting it. Uh, Warren, yeah, Warren uh, Snook. Okay. And uh, if, if we're lucky, he'll be joining us and tell us why he uh, wanted to acquire it. It's there not you go. In his hands let yet. me try. Let me see if I can add him to the call. Let me see. I'm going to click on here and say, um, uh, let's see. Where's Warren? Um, hmm. Or, and here he is. Okay. Let me see if I can add him right now. See if he'll answer. Add. You're going to hear some ringing, folks. Um, let's see what happens here. Actually, I didn't hear the ringing. I didn't hear the ringing. Okay, he's joined the call. Warren, can you hear us? I can hear you, Craig. Well, there we go. We've got your, your watch on the screen, and it looks stunning. Absolutely. That, Greg, it looks absolutely spectacular. Yeah, and um, I'll tell you what, you're going to love that thing on the wrist because that titanium is just very, very nice on the skin, very comfortable. 
and you're going to like that bracelet, the, the way you can adjust it very easily. What, what are your plans for the watch? I'm going to keep it great. I mean, I've, I've been to uh, Seikos for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got quite a few Rolexes. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got uh, a Rolex Cameron Deep Sea. And I saw a similar watch, the, uh, the 255 S uh, SBGH 255 locally. Mm -hmm. And very, very lucky to be able to buy one of the limited edition 500 from Steve from a Grand Seiko authorized dealer. So very, very fortunate to be able to get that. Very good. Are you going to liquidate any of the Rolexes? I, I've actually um, liquidated two of my Rolexes. I sold a Sea Dweller SD43 recently uh -huh. and a 42 millimeter Polar Explorer, and okay. I've got three Rolexes left. So I've got the Deep Sea Camera, mm -hmm. I've got a gold Pepsi GMT, and I've got a green ceramic uh, Submariner as well. So you say you have a Pepsi GMT? That is that steel and gold, did you say? That's the white gold version. White gold. Oh, wow. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> That's a heavy hitter. Um, any um, any possibility of you liquidating one of those sport watches and and getting something a little dressier? It sounds like you're heavy on the sport side. I am. I've got a Parmigiani Metrograph as well. Um, the lure of a 40 millimeter day date is very strong. Okay. So that might be the pipeline sometime in the not too distant future, Craig. Okay. Well, this is fantastic and. And you're going to be shipping this out to him tomorrow, Steve? Uh, yes, sir. That will go. Well, there you go. And I got it on the screen, and we also showed some photos of it also, Warren. It, it, this is a, a gorgeous timepiece. I mean, I, and I think I saw this one. Wasn't it there when I was there at the party? Uh, that, that's where I uh, saw the watch through your channel. So you're doing a live stream at Steve's uh, store little treasury and i noticed that watch in his display cabinet yeah i i know that. he showed yeah i know he, he showed it on that live stream but i think i that saw one good. when i was there at the store too i i think that was a, a prior one i've sold several yeah but they're all done now that's the last one i could find anywhere that's the end of it yeah all right now how many of them were there again uh 500 500 units worldwide so well, that, that's, that, that, that's just going to be a gorgeous unit, uh, and I hope you're going to actually wear it some, Warren. Are, are you going to wear this on a regular basis? I wear all my watches. They're not safe queens. Okay. Um, I'm very passionate about watches, Craig, and if you're going to keep them safe, you might as well just uh, look at a jeweler's display window. That's cheaper than buying and not wearing them. Yeah, okay. Well, there we go. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly well i mean this has been fantastic anybody have any questions for warren before we let him uh, get off the phone uh let's see that gs diver is the ultimate marine master what a super cool watch that's brian p in the house well done warren i've seen that model in person it's a hefty piece now remember david this is the titanium so it's it, even though it's a it's got some mass to it. It's it's lighter weight than it would normally be because it's titanium. Uh, Steve has big treasures at Little Treasury, says Durr. Um, yeah. Uh, so do you want to stick around, Warren, while we show some other watches? Absolutely. Love to Let's play. show another watch, Steve. Okay. I've got, a, uh, got four new Grand Seikos in today. Okay. So I have uh, new to us coming up, and let's see who knows what this guy is. Let me uh, get him situated. You, Craig, got to tell me what I'm doing. Okay, in, so. a little bit further from the camera. A little bit further. A little bit, just a hair further. Just a hair. Good. Hold it right there. That's good enough. Okay, any ideas? I, I I know what it is. You told me it's it's the okay. it's the it's the gold uh, snowflake. I, I didn't yeah. know that that was coming to the U.S. Well, here it is. 
It is, it is amazing. Absolutely. Any comments, Warren? Do you see it? The snowflake is a beautiful watch, especially with the uh, the spring drive movements. Do you do you see the one with the gold? Do you see it on the screen? I do indeed. Yes. What do you think? It's a very very classic, very very stylish combination. Yeah, I I, 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 I think it's right I think it's a little bit more legible than the standard snowflake. You may know, well be. may well be. I think it is. I and I, I think it's stunning. I, I, they're both stunning, though. I mean, it's almost a coin toss on the two snowflakes, the gold and then the regular one. I mean, they're both stunning. All right, what do you have next? Okay, coming up. Let me just uh, change. Brian P says, "I tip my hat to this gentleman for wearing his watch. You work hard, my friend. Enjoy the fruits of your labor." That's Brian P. Absolutely. All right. And uh, so, that looks pretty good right there, actually. Okay. Th let me tell you a story on this. This mm -hmm. is the uh, SBGR311. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you all know that it has a nickname. Uh, are you catching the color pretty well? well it's a little it, bit dark looking. I, I, I think it's, it's a little, it's not that dark in person. Well, it's pretty dark. It's okay. but it's brown. Dark like brown, yeah. Dark okay. brown. It's got the textured dial, and uh, its nickname is the Cookie. Okay. Okay, it's a pretty cool little watch. If I tilt it a bit, we might get a better. Uh, All right, set. great. Now we can see Warren. Okay, he's got his camera yeah, going. Yeah, my, my broadband has uh, kicked in. There you go. Uh, okay. A absolutely. Oh, guy. So okay, we got hey. side by side with this this stunner. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, that is just another gorgeous watch, another gorgeous okay. automatic. Now, that's not a high beat, yeah. correct? Uh, no, this is a regular That's 28.8, yeah, okay. Yeah. And the story on this is um, uh, a customer bought this and uh, returned it the next day. Okay. In favor of an Omega, so he just made a mistake. And I'm selling this as pre-owned. It's as new and very special price on it um, now that's not the watch that you showed us once before is it or is it the same watch uh, you may have seen the watch but i have okay. a, a brand new one in the case okay and this has uh, been worn for one day okay and it's in perfect condition special price for someone who wants it and uh just thought i'd uh, show it up here and uh there you go that's it. somebody so, wants a starter grand seiko Here's Give your me chance. A call. It's a deep discount. Here's your chance. And, and you have virtually the entire warranty still. Warren, what part of the UK are you in? Somebody's asking. I'm in York, North York. Yorkshire, which is not far from Leeds, about 60 miles away from Manchester, Craig. Okay. Well, there you go, David. He's not going to give us an exact address because he's got a lot of nice <laughs> watches there, so we don't yeah, recommend right. that. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I have a next coming up. And this is a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. um, this is what I just talked about the other day. And, and now is that I, the one in steel? It is. Okay. And they just came in. And how's that focus? It looks good. They, they came in that quick. Uh, it surprised me. You just ordered and, those uh, things. Yeah. You never can tell. You uh, pull the trigger and... Uh, they whack you immediately. Now, now, how how thin is that on wrist? Does it sit nice and flat on the wrist? I think that one is. Uh, I think under it's 10 about ten millimeters. millimeters, right? Yeah, a little under, I think. Yeah, that it's is a beautiful ha piece. Have you tried it on wrist? I just got it out of the box just before we started. Okay. And uh, that's the SBGK zero zero five. Okay. And that manual wind. Um, the power reserve on the dial. Tom Austin's and, in the house. He says hi. Yeah, and I like that. Some people said that they should have put the, the seconds down at 6 o'clock and put the power reserve on the back. That would have been okay, but I don't mind it the way it is. I, I think it's fine the way it is. And, and, you know, when you see these in real life, 
a, a macro shot close up, you know, you see every, everything different than when it's in real life on the wrist. When it's in real life on the wrist, you don't notice that power indicator that much. It just kind of is there, and if you want to look at it, you look at it. But it, to me, it's not distracting at all on my spring drive. So you really have to try these things in person. So, um, all right, what do you have next? Okay, another stunner. Let me grab this, change it out. This is the SGBK002. Okay, we don't see it yet. I know. Wait a minute. Got my setup twisted a little bit. I, I need an assistant. That's what I need. Yeah, you do. Sure. Oh, wow. That's the gold one. It is. Holy mackerel, Andy, folks. 18 karat gold. Look at that puppy. And that's the same thickness as the other one, right? Yes. Wow. Is that a good, good focus? Yeah, it looks gorgeous. Yeah. Wow, is all I can say. Well. Oh, my goodness. And that is how many millimeters? Uh, Case size? 39 did, uh, or 38? Hang on one second. Of course, someone took my gauge. In, thir in 30 seconds, I'm adding. In, thir in 30 seconds, I'm going to add Dave Serio to the call. Um, so, um, any other? One more watch. Go, go ahead and show it. So, you always, they always say, don't scratch your nose at an auction. Mm hmm. You familiar with that term? Yeah. You used to be an yeah. auctioneer, right? You accidentally buy I it. Scratched, I scratched my nose, I yeah. guess, uh, okay. while looking at these things. Okay. And uh, I didn't really order this, but okay. lo and behold, it showed up. And okay. I guess, I guess I don't regret it. Okay. This, to me, is uh, this. Now, which one is that? It looks it looks the same. It's. it's no, the other one is deep red. This is black. Beautiful. Oh, so it's just a dial is different. Yeah. Okay, so it's the same watch with a different dial. I thought yeah. you were going to roll the platinum one into the picture. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> roll, roll me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stand by a second. I'm going to try to add Dave Sear because I, I want him to see this too. Let me see if I can add Dave. This is really high tech, folks, here, what we're doing here. Um, let's give this a shot. And we're going to add him, see what happens here. Hello there, Mr. There's Dave. Dave, I'm seeing you. Um, I'm hearing you, but uh, make sure that your camera's turned on. Okay, there you go. Now, can you turn it uh, horizontal? Okay. All right. Dave Serio is in the house. Dave, uh, welcome. Uh, we're showing uh, and um, we're showing the Grand Seiko there. Do you see it on the screen? Yes, it is. Yep. That's a solid gold uh, Grand Seiko. And there's uh, there's that. We're going to talk about your watch here in a minute too. Um, we got that solid gold Grand Seiko. That's the last watch that um, uh, Steve from Little Treasury Jewelers is showing here today. As soon as I would come on the air, that you would actually give me that watch for doing so, and I really appreciate that Craig it's really nice we're going to get your address off air and he'll be shipping that over there to you yeah, once Craig transfers the funds over I'm ready to go there you go funds <laughs> transfer there you go um, so um, any anything else that you want to um, say before we we let you go Steve no I think I'm done and uh, thanks for watching everybody and uh, Warren will uh, be in touch uh, and the link, the link is down. Thank the you link, the Steve, link. Very much appreciated. Yeah, and the link is down Steve in the. Been gentleman, all the way through the transaction, and I'd highly recommend Steve to anybody at all. Well, Warren, you're gonna get, you're getting a beautiful watch, and and when you come, you you should come to the next party that that Steve's having. You hop across the pond and um and and come come to the party. Is he invited, Steve? Absolutely, absolutely. That'd be a great suggestion. There, there yeah, you go. Up across the pond. Yeah. <laughs> this is not going from Thurmont to Frederick, Craig. You know. No, it's not. But uh, this guy's a jet setter. Warren's a jet setter. 
So um, thanks again, uh, Warren, for watching. And, um, and we're going to let you and Steve go. And then uh, if you guys want to, you've got the link so you can watch the rest of the show. Uh, Dave Sirio is going to give us a tour of, his, of some of his uh, high-performance vehicles. Look, sir. Thank so. you very much, Craig. All the best, Steve. Catch up soon. Okay, will do. Take and care. Thank you, Greg and Warren. Take care, gentlemen. Okay. Take care. Cheers. Bye. <laughs> If you all just hang up, I think that'll, I think we'll, it, huh? yeah, I think, I think it'll keep the call live with, um, my buddy Dave. There we go. So Dave, while Warren's figuring out how to hang up the call, um, <laughs> why, why don't you tell us about your show? First of all. Yeah. Well, Craig, as you know, because you, uh, join me every Saturday on the show, which is, Appreciate the reciprocation here. Uh, I have a talk show on two stations in the Maryland area every Saturday morning. It's an automotive talk show. We talk about car repair, buying and selling information, anything to do really with the car industry. We're more than happy to talk with folks about questions and answers. And, uh, you know, just a good time. We have music. We have comedy. We have a lot of different things going on with the show. We have great ship. We usually have a couple guys like Mike Lambert from the Shine Shop, a detail expert. In the Maryland area, and we have Jose Bueso from Dynamic Automotive joins us, and it airs Saturday morning, eight to ten, on WCBM in Baltimore. That's AM six eighty in Baltimore, and then ten to eleven in the Frederick area, which is where you join me, and that is ten to eleven on WFMD three talk nine thirty, and uh, it's a great time. So if even if you don't have an unbelievable big interest in automobiles. Normally, you're going to find this to be a real enjoyable show. Oh, it's fun. And, and folks, if you ever have a problem with your vehicle, like, for example, Clive, he, he bought a, an MR2 with all kinds of issues. He, mm -hmm. could, he could call in to Dave's show on Saturday mornings. It doesn't matter where you are. You can tune in to his show, and you can call in. WFMD streams it uh, live. And... Um, and yeah. you're, you, they can go to DaveSirio.com and find out information about that, correct? Yes, that's correct. You and I've, Dave, I've got a go. link. I've got a link in the, in the description of the video. So yep. go there every Saturday morning. Hey, this guy, people call in with all kinds of issues with their cars, and he knows the answer. So pretty, pretty cool stuff. Okay, so... I so, feel so a little underdressed. I do, do feel a little underdressed here. I mean... You're in a tie and coat, and I'm wearing my best car T-shirt. So. Yeah, but you're in Florida, so you can do that. That's the yeah. way that works. Okay. A, so, so what are you going to show us first? All right, you want to see the game room, or do you want to see the cars? Let's do, do, do the game. Your the game room's closest to you, right? Yes. Let's do the game room first. Okay. Let's uh, flip this around here. Let's take a walk around. All right, we're going to walk through the old kitchen area here. There you go. And what I've done is I, I'm I'm an older guy, as you know. And I love games from the 80s. Now, I have a bunch of different games here, but let's walk into the game room. Mm -hmm. This is a converted two-car garage. Okay. And I built another garage, which you'll see in a few minutes. So what we have is we have the eight-foot slate table. Okay. A little table. This table has been with me since 1965. When I was 10 years old, my dad gave me this table. And I have had it disassembled and reassembled probably about eight different times over the last 55 years. Wow. So, Love this table, and uh, it's nothing special about it. Just sentimental value of being the one that you know I was given as a kid, and uh, very lucky to have as a kid, by the way. So we have the pool table, we have air hockey, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun. This one even has the electronic digits. I'm gonna okay. take a look at the uh, called a Sweet Shawnee. This game is from the 50s. It's a like a one-arm bandit with just this uh, one connector here, mm -hmm. and then push down there. And you get your fruit. Okay. Okay. If you have a winner, you get money. If you don't, you know. Of course, it's all free play here. Yeah. We're not here for pickles, quarters, and dimes, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. And if you're anything but a Ravens fan or an Orioles fan, you probably won't like this room. We have this wall dedicated to the 2012 Ravens champion. Yep. This wall dedicated to the Orioles. And as Frank and Brooks and my favorite player of all time, somebody that probably no one knows, or, well, very few, Luis Aparicio. He oh, was my yeah. Favorite, and I wore number 11 every single day of, of sports there. Yep. We have um, 
Wurlitzer jukebox. This is not a, a normal Wurlitzer jukebox as you normally see. This is a console stereo type and uh, 1972. Mm -hmm. 100 songs in it. We won't play any. We don't want to worry about Mr. Uh, Craig and his copyright. We've got the traditional walk and don't walk sign. That does work. Yep. Four Orioles. A little bit of Brooklyn Dodgers. I happen to like them also. Okay. And we have a Ravens Championship. This was done by your friend, unfortunately, who has passed, but your friend and Frederick made that up. Yeah, Victor from Affordable yep. Signs. Good guy. Yep. Exactly. Yep. We have a candy machine. All right. No candy in it right now, but we're working on that. Your finger's we a little bit over the camera. What's that? Move your finger a little bit away from the camera. There we go. We have a Nintendo Popeye. Fairly rare little guy. This is one of the games that you would see in a pretty nice uh, restaurant or nightclub. Mm -hmm. They had these machines. You could sit one person on each side and play each other. Okay. Here comes the 80s big time. We have Centipede and Millipede and Missile Command. Okay. We have what I think really started the whole shebang, even though there were games before it, Space Invaders. My favorite game of all times, addicted to it, even to this day, Donkey Kong. So all these work. How do you oh, keep them working? How do you keep them working? Free play, yep. This is the most obnoxious game ever made, Hubert. I had the uh, silencer because it will drive you crazy. Going back into the old days, this is the 50s. This is a 25-hole gambling machine. Okay. It is not a pinball machine. You have 25 balls or holes down here to put a ball in. Get your five balls, and you try to get these lined up get three in a row on the screen mm -hmm. and all kinds of odds there's all kinds of games it's a really unique game called bounty and they have a bunch of different names this is a full-fledged game of course the uh, pinball yep. this is called dot leaves volcano and this particular game has around since like 1882 okay that's great i've got draw 80 poker unfortunately she's ill we're still working on draw 80 poker getting working We've got our sister called Cherry Master, which okay. is fruit game for the electronic games. And uh, again, all these games are free play here. People can come in and enjoy it. We have a traffic light that is functioning. And we also have some car picks. We have to. Vipers, uh, Panteras, Mustangs. So, uh, so of all those games, only one of them doesn't work. At this time, yes. That, that's pretty amazing that you can <laughs> keep all those things working. I have better odds than most of the arcade games, or the arcades themselves. <laughs> yeah. So this is it. We've got spotlighting here for each game, and uh, a lot of fun. So uh, let's take you on out and show you the cars, okay? Yeah, so you, you've turned that garage into a game room, so you had to build another a garage. Correct. Well, the, the two-car garage would not hold my toys. No. So no, sure two, two-car garage would not get the job done for, for Dave. Working with the HOA is always fun. We built a garage as big as we could, and then we made our way out to put two lifts in there so we could fit as many cars in as we could. Yep. And now have a six-car garage. Okay. Now, we've got some of them sitting outside for you to make it easy. Okay. We'll start, start, we'll start with this black one over here. That's the newest one. This is a particular 2016 SRT Challenger Hellcat. Now, if you're familiar with this car at all, this is the one that has 707 horsepower. And at the time of its manufacture, it was the fastest production car uh, uh, scoop uh, ever built. This has a 0 to uh, 60 in about 3.3 seconds. It has a quarter mile in about 11 seconds, 10.9. It's fully equipped, beautiful interior. Now, that's the one we took and did the dyno test, right? Exactly, right. We dynoed it at about, uh, I think it was... Uh, 625 horses at the rear wheel. Yeah, we've got a video on my channel, folks, if you want to check that out, uh, right. us that, dyno testing that one. And that makes it about 750 horsepower right under the hood, if you figure out the loss of horsepower uh, when you're yeah. talking about a situation like this. Yep. This is a 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi. Yeah. And Again, 707 is what it's... Uh, now, after. is this the one that you drive more often? Is that I, why? Oh, equally. I really do. I take them all out for a ride. That's the great thing about Florida. The weather is so nice for all seasons that you can afford to take them out individually. You don't have to have any of them in storage. Yeah. So 
Sometimes it's which one has gas, and sometimes which one is available easy at the end of the garage. Yeah. Both stuff to take them all out, in, you know, together. Yeah. Right. So that's the that's the Hellcat. And uh, now the the white car sitting next to is that the Lexus? Yeah, that's my Lexus. I LS. haven't seen that one yet. Okay. My Lexus LS four sixty. Nice. Bought that about four months ago. Nice. And she's sweet. She's only got about ninety eight thousand miles on it. Yeah. Thousand. And uh, fully equipped. And. Uh, We'll show you the interior of this also. So that's like your your runaround car. <laughs> yep, my runaround car. Poor thing. We've got it set up to want to take the dogs with me. We've got room for the dogs. But real nice interior. Beautiful car. And let me tell you, I want to thank all the listeners out there that don't like sedans and won't buy sedans. Absolutely. The this car has come down so low, so low because of being a sedan. It was an unbelievable deal. Yeah, they all want SUVs, and that LS sedan is the best you can get. I mean, you can't get a better sedan than that. You can't get a better car than that. You can't. It's remarkable. It really is. We've talked about that here on the channel numerous times because, you know, I had a, an LS 400, and I had an LS 430. And the only reason I got the Prius and got rid of the LS 430 and got the Prius is so I could put the Segway in the back easily, you know, the hatchback. That, that, otherwise, I'd still be driving an LS. All right, well, this one right here is, is my most expensive car. This is a 2013 SRT Viper GTS, and it is a special color. I don't know if it'll come off on video, but it's called Striker Red. Mm -hmm. And Striker Red is a custom paint job from Dodge. There's no paint code. There's no touch-up paint. So you drive it, and you keep up on your prayer life. And this car I've had, I bought brand new. I ordered it brand new. And uh, got a chance to talk. I'll with show a picture of it later. That a really good picture I have of it that'll show the color even better. But it looks right there that we're look, we're seeing the color. It, yeah, it that car is amazing. And of course, Mike Lambert uh, did the paint on that and the clear coat and everything. Correct. Well, he did the the, the ceramic coating. Yes. Yeah, yeah, the, the ceramic coating. coating. Brought out the color even even more. Yeah, he does all it my, fantastic. All my, all my fun cars are six speed or five speed manual. Yep. Uh, no, no, uh, no automatics when it comes to fun cars. There you That's go. The SRT Viper GTS. Yep. Now we turn around. We have three cars here in the garage. This is my 2003 Dodge Viper convertible. Okay. It's called Gen 3, Generation 3 Viper. The SRT that we just looked at, the Striker Red, is Gen 5. Okay. The car has 500 horsepower. The Gen 5 has 640. Okay. And again, a six-speed manual. This is a factory convertible, mm -hmm. and uh, just a fun car to drive. I mean, 500 horsepower in a light car like this, plus also a convertible. It is a blast to drive, and uh, good chance of you know getting the hair blowing through my wind. There you go. <laughs> anyway, all right. So this is one of my favorite cars, to be honest with you. And I love all my cars, but this one is really one of my favorites. This is the 2010 Challenger SRT8. What I love about it is the color. I think the orange SRT8 of the 2008, 9, and 10 ilk is probably the prettiest car, prettiest Challenger that Dodge ever did. It is just gorgeous color. And, 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 now, and, and now tell us what you've got on your wrist to match it. Oh, well, I have the orange Seiko. Yeah, well, see, I'm, I'm going to do that there. There you go. There. I've got the orange. Seiko that matches the Challenger SRT8, and uh, this is the one that Craig had gotten for me. Yeah, how how many years ago did you yeah, did you how many years ago did you get that from me? Probably about four years ago, I would think four or five. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Before I came down to Florida, and I've been down here for a total of about four years. Okay. So make, um, that so. that car looks great from the front too. Oh, it is. It's a beautiful car. It really is what I think one of the prettiest cars Dodge ever made. And uh, the appointments on it are fantastic. So I love that one. This last one that I have in the garage, one's missing. I want to tell you about that. I'll tell you about that in a second. Mm -hmm. This is a car that very few people are, are aware of. And I got to admit, I bought it new. I'm never going to get my money for it. I know that. But I bought it because I like it. You this bought it new? Yes, I did. Wow. This is a 1989 Chrysler Maserati TC convertible. Yep. If looking at it, you're saying it looks like a LeBaron. There's a reason. Uh, the gentleman involved in with Chrysler at the time was Iacocca, mm -hmm. and he saw the plans for the car in 1984, approved them, and then all of a sudden the 1987 Chrysler LeBaron 
looked just like it. It was a coincidence, I'm sure. Yeah. So, <laughs> an Italian car. It is not an American car. It is powered by a 2.2 liter Chrysler block. It mm-hmm. has a Maserati cylinder head on it and has 215 horsepower and is a five speed manual. And it also comes with a hard top, which is behind it in that blanket uh, behind the car yeah. right there. Yeah. So, hard top and convertible, just like the old Thunderbirds had and the new Thunderbirds. Yep. Uh, this is a fun car, but again, not that more knowledgeable to people. And this, by the way, is so rare. As I mentioned, this is a five speed manual. Mm-hmm. Only 150 of these in the world exist. Now, how many again? 250. Wow. There's of these cars made total, but 250 manual transmissions and uh, 16 valve engines, and then the rest were Chrysler engines with automatic transmission. Gotcha. Now, the car that's missing, and I'm sorry it is, but it's at a repair shop, and not for anything really wrong with it, one of the uh, seats had ripped in the uh, car, and the other seat was getting to be very dry rot. So I took that into the shop and had the seat being taken care of, and we're going to get that back and just we'll get back that probably to the mall. And that's the Pantera, right? Yeah, that's a 72 De Tomaso Pantera that I've had since 1985. 1985. Well, there you go. So now we talk about folks that are in motion on this channel and making things happen. And Dave Serio is the, the definition of in motion here down in Florida. And um, he got settled in down there and had that custom garage made so he could get his goodies in there. And he relocated from Maryland. He was up here in Maryland. And now he's a Florida guy. I don't blame him one bit. And there's um, Jasper. Jasper. Jasper the Wonder Dog. Yep. And um, I've got, he's in some of the pictures at some of the car shows where I've taken pictures and so forth. And, um, and you know, D- Dave, you and I were, were the first to do some live streaming on YouTube back when it was in beta, back when nobody had it. And, uh, and we were beta testing it, and, and we did some live streaming shows. Um, your finger's on the, on the lens a little bit there. Yes, uh, yes. And so... So, uh, so we go back a little ways, and, and actually we go back even before that, back in, in the beginning, it was just photos on the Internet. They, oh, sure. th- there wasn't even any video on the Internet. Uh, well, I've been on the air on WFMD since 2004. We met almost immediately at that point. Yeah. We've known each other for 15 years, and I've been on WCBM since 1996, over yeah. my 24th year with WCBM. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so you ought to know is the show. He does it every Saturday morning for three hours. So you guys can call in if you ever have any questions about automobiles. He's going to have the answer for you. And I really appreciate you giving us this this tour today, Dave. A lot of fun. Hey, and by the way, I happen to have a DJ business down here. I do DJ work at parties and uh, nightclubs and restaurants and things like that in Central Florida. So if you're listening in Central Florida area and you need a DJ, uh, you can find me on Facebook right under my name, Dave Serio, and uh, you'll see me from Wildwood, Florida. I'll be more than happy to help you out. There you go. All righty. Well, thank you, my friend, and I'll ta- I guess I'll be talking to you Saturday morning. Sure hope so. Enjoy having the show every single Saturday morning with you. Take care now. Thanks, Greg. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there you go. Dave Serio is in motion down in Florida, uh, I would say. And, of course, um, Steve from Little Treasury Jewelers, he was in motion. And it looks like there's some folks in the chat that are in motion. So everybody's making things happen. Uh, Tom says, great house. Uh, True Liberty says, he's in my neck of the woods. Tom Austin, we are under... Omega Embargo, only one I was allowed to take photo of is 18 karat gold, okay. And let's see here, um, big thank you for having me on your channel. Warren is in the chat now, okay. And uh, thank you for coming on. And um, he's thanking Steve, and uh, Vegas is in the house, and he thanks Dave, great setup. Thanks Dave, enjoyed the tour, our wags. A lot of folks in motion today. Let me um, see if I can pull up a photo of um, of uh, his Viper. 
Oh, da, 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 da. I said I'd try to pull one up here that shows the photo a little bit better. And um, let's see here. Let's see what we got here. There we go. There we go. There she be. That color, it is stunning. That's a custom color that, uh, that he got. He ordered it and, um, and got that color. And there's a young lady that I asked to stand with it. Just makes the car a little more interesting, don't you think? Don't you think? But that's, uh, that's Dave's car up at one of our sponsors up here in Frederick, Dynamic Automotive. Four locations here in Frederick County doing the right thing, making things happen. You can see there they got signs in there that says visit us at frederick.com. Big longtime sponsors. So there you go. Dave Sirio was in the house giving us a little tour. You guys wanted to see from more people that are in motion, and I got to apologize for the moray on my jacket, but I was wearing this is a lightweight cashmere, spring summer weight cashmere, uh, Oxford, O X X F O R D. It was custom made back in the day and um, very comfortable, so I'm wearing it, even though it's given the moray. I'll try to be more careful about the moray. Let's see here. Um, Let's see. Others who want to attend our event, please send your contact info to Steve at Little Treasury, and I'll be sure to get an invite. Mention also the brands you're interested in. There you go. VIPs getting special treatment here. All right, folks, let me know if there are any questions at all about what we've talked about and what we've done. Anything else you'd like to take a look at? Because I'm going to wrap this puppy up and I'm going to go get something to eat because this was a successful show, I think. Another successful show. <clears throat> Bringing people in that are busy, making things happen, in motion, as the Bitcoin Meister would say. He'd say they're in motion. A very little more. Yeah, but it's there. It's there. I can see it. Um, I think it's it, as much the camera as, as the bandwidth issue. It also depends on your bandwidth. If you've got higher bandwidth, then you see less. Um, so as, as, as YouTube needs to compress it because of less bandwidth, then you get more more of the moray. Um, let me think what else we can say. I think that covers it. Let me know if there's any other questions in the chat before I wrap this puppy up. Going in here to my Video Pro app, my little Video Pro app, which I can control that little thing. Cur uh, curious how far from Reagan Airport Steve is, our WAGs. Um, you would be much better off if you could come into BWI. From uh, Reagan, it's probably going to be an hour's drive, assuming you don't have any traffic issues. I'm guessing it'd be about an hour. But I think it'd be closer to come from BWI, maybe a half an hour or less from BWI, if you can get into there. Got to get ready for work. Thanks, Craig. Hopefully another stream tomorrow. Yeah, we'll play it by ear. We'll see. All the best, Craig. Great show, Warren. Any other shows planned this week, Craig? Nothing planned, but we'll see. Best airport from us is BWI. Yeah, there you go. Reagan is maybe 25 miles. Uh, Reagan might be even a little further than that. Depending on traffic. See, it's all going to depend on when you come in and the traffic. Because no traffic, I mean, you can get places a lot quicker, right? So, there's that. Um, all right. I think we're going to wrap this puppy up. I think we got a good little good little show going on here. 
Thanks, everybody, for watching. And remember, click subscribe, pound like, and click the little bell, little bell so you get notifications. You do want to get notifications. You do want to do that. Thanks again, everybody.